Hi, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Money Monday. Come on in. Um, we're going to be getting started soon. Tonight, we're talking about these rising, ridiculous food costs. OMG. Um, hey, Candy, welcome to Money Monday. It's not a figment of your imagination. Um, it's not a drill. Uh, food prices are higher and it's really impacting our budget. So we're going to talk about how to cut your food budget, what that looks like. Um, I'm going to give you some tips. I'm going to give you some ideas, um, so on and so forth. I think I have about 13 tips tonight. So we'll talk about that um, in length, but 14, I have 14 tips. But do know that everybody is experiencing um, this rise in food costs. And I didn't, it's not that I didn't know. I just don't think that I was really aware. Like I'm paying attention, but I'm not really paying attention. And so this is why it's important to track what's going on with your budget, attract, not attract, track your expenses to just kind of figure it out. So we'll give folks another 30 seconds or so to hop on. And then we're going to dive right in because my food budget is literally eating me. It is so ridiculous. And I'm not even in a high cost state. I'm not in California or New York or Hawaii where things are traditionally higher. I'm in Texas where things should theoretically like in my mind be cheap, but they're not. Um, so we're going to talk about it tonight. So come on in. Let's give people another 15 seconds or so. All right, let's get started. So as I said earlier, um, you're not imagining the rise in food costs. It's documented. It's well stated. They've been reporting on it that according to statistics, according to the numbers, food prices were lower pre pandemic. Right. So before the pandemic, people were spending about two hundred dollars a week on groceries or two fifty a week. Now they're spending about three hundred dollars. And that's for folks who have the budget to do so. I can't imagine what people who don't have the disposable income who maybe are living at a lower um, income level are experiencing. So let's talk about it. Um, according to the U.S. government, uh, you should be spending about $1,000 on food a month, which is still high when you really think about it. Um, that's about $250 a week. Now, it's going to depend on if you have special um, dietary restrictions, right? If you can't do gluten, that type of thing is going to depend on your family size. Of course, a family of two should not be spending the same amount of money as a family of five. And then it's going to depend on where you're located. Somebody in California should not be paying the same amount of money as somebody that's living in Alabama, right? Because those are two different locations, two different industries. Um, it's going to depend on where you're shopping. These are all factors that are um, impacting food costs. But do know that food is higher. The price has gone up. The portion size has gone down. And we talked about inflation a couple weeks ago. So let's talk about what you can do. OK, the first thing that you can do is cook at home. And I know it seems cheaper to eat out, right? Because it's about the same amount of money. But the reason why it's cheaper to cook at home is because you can really plan for those leftovers. Um, you can really plan your meals better. You can make your meals stretch. You can serve simple meals. It doesn't have to be elaborate meals that you would often get at restaurants, but you can really make your dollar stretch more at home, right? So let me give you an example. You go out to a restaurant, you order salmon. Salmon typically comes with what? Potatoes and a vegetable. And you might order dessert, you might order a drink. It brings you about $40. You can take that same $40 and buy a pound of salmon for about $20, $25, a couple potatoes, a bag of rice, and a vegetable. Cook that at home and then have that same meal that costs you $40 for the next three or four meals, right? You can eat it for a dinner that night, then lunch and dinner the next night, and then maybe lunch the next day. So we're talking about three or four meals from that same amount of money that you would have spent at a restaurant. So quickest, cheapest, fastest, simplest thing you can do is cook at home, period. The next thing that you could do is buy in bulk or buy by the pound. Now, let me specify what I mean. When you're buying in bulk, it has to make sense, right? You can easily walk in Sam's and spend $100. And that's why I hate going in Sam's is because it can get expensive. But what you have to do is really know your family and really know your situation to figure out, one, does it make sense for me to buy in bulk and what in bulk, right? So is it um, household items? Is it food only? Is it pantry items? What should I be buying? And then two, the second part of this is the opposite side. So maybe you don't buy in bulk. Maybe you buy by the pound. So this past weekend, I needed shrimp for a recipe. 
And the bag of shrimp I was looking at was $10 for the bag, right? And I said, uh, let me put this back. Went to the meat counter, got a pound of shrimp, which is the same amount of money that I would, would have been paying for it in the bag. And the only difference was um, I had to de-vein it more, right? I had to de-vein it a little bit more and take off the shell. And it was about 2 or $3 cheaper. So figure out what's going to work best for you in your situation, either buying by the pound or buying in bulk. Um, and make it make sense, right? Something else that I saw someone do that I thought was very interesting was they know their family eats a lot of meat. They went in with a couple family members and they purchased a whole cow. And it was about twenty five or three thousand dollars, but split over five families, that's only five hundred dollars. And they literally had enough meat, enough um cow in their freezer to last enough, enough beef to last for the year, right? So if you could get a couple families and you know where to buy a cow that you can find somebody to butcher it or maybe you know how to butcher it yourself, I don't know. That's an option for you to buy a whole cow, butcher the meat that you're gonna use, use every part of that cow that you can and then freeze what you what you can for the year to last you. So you just have to get creative in how you're purchasing is basically the gist of number two. Number three is batch your meals. So what that looks like is cooking at home, but instead of cooking one pan of lasagna, cook two, freeze the second pan. That's going to help you when you're in a rush. That's going to help you um, when you don't have time to maybe cook or you don't have the money. Maybe you don't get paid to next week. You could pull that um, lasagna or that batch meal out of the freezer and cook it. So that's an option as well. Batch your meals is also a great idea um, if you want to. Hey, uh, Jess Gray, thanks for watching. Welcome to Money Monday. Um, Batching meals is also a good idea if you have family that you trust, right? I know times have changed. There are some things that we have to do differently because you can't trust everybody's kitchen. But if you have family that you trust, maybe you make a meal, they make a meal, the next person makes something, the fourth person make, makes something, and now you have four meals that you've exchanged with other people, and all you have to do is make two of that meal. So that's an idea. Number four is meal plan. And when I say meal plan, I'm not talking about, um, I'm talking about two things. I'm talking about planning your meals, but thinking about how you plan your meals, right? So the first thing is to plan the meal. That's the first part of, of this process. You're planning your meals either for your lunch or for your dinner, right? So you say, okay, for dinner, for the next uh, three nights or two nights, I'm going to make salmon and a vegetable and a starch, right? And so you plan that meal out, but then you also plan the list. And so you say, okay, if I'm going to eat salmon, this salmon dinner for the next three nights, I know I need at least about half a pound of salmon, right? And then I'm going to need, you know, five potatoes and I'm going to need two heads of broccoli or a thing of asparagus. And you put that on your list. And so by planning your list, you're actually only buying what you need. Now, this brings me to my bonus. This is not a tip, but this is a bonus. You should absolutely be shopping with a list. There is never a time, ever, 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 that you should be going into the grocery store without a list. Now, building your list, you have to be intentional with that because what most people do is they say, okay, um, I need eggs, bread, milk. Uh, I'll get some cereal. I'll get, you know, this, this, this. I'll get some vegetables, I'll get some lettuce because, oh, I'm going to make a salad and then it rots in the refrigerator for the next five to seven days, right? When you plan your list, when you're shopping with a list, you want to say, okay, on Monday for breakfast, I'm going to have eggs, a banana and bread. So I know I need eggs, bananas and bread. Okay, for lunch, I'm going to eat my salmon meal. So I already know what I need for that. For uh, dinner, I'm going to eat uh, my salmon meal again. So I know what I need for that. So you're only buying what it is that, you're ne that you actually need for those meals that you've planned. And then you're checking your, your pantry and your refrigerator before you leave. You probably don't need cooking oil, right? So you don't need to buy cooking oil this trip. So really being intentional about planning your list is what's going to help you. Five is use what you have. Um, I cannot tell you, we moved recently some time ago. And we threw away so much expired food because we buy things and we have good intentions, you know, canned goods, um, pantry items, even things in our refrigerator and we never use them. So look in your refrigerator, look in your pantry and start building your meals around what you already have so that you can use what you have. It's food. I can guarantee you in your pantry right now, rotting, expiring, the ex expiration date is creeping up on us and you just still buying the same thing over and over. No, use what you have. Six is to set your food budget and then test it, right? So this is two parts. You say, okay, for the week, I'm going to set my food budget or for the pay period, I'm going to set my food budget at $400, right? And maybe you're a family of two. You say, okay, 
$400 isn't going to work. For the next two weeks, you should be tracking on what you're spending food on, you and your household. Is $400 feasible? And can you stick to that? If you're consistently spending over $400, it's not working. It's a misalignment somewhere. Um, you need to either tighten up or you need to revamp that number. But set your food budget, stick to it, and then test it and make sure that it works. This seven's going to hurt, okay? Cut the meat, okay? My, my mother, like our parents, they did not eat meat with every single meal. You do not need to eat meat with every single meal that you eat. You don't need meat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, cut the meat. And if you are going to have meat, then pair it with something less expensive, right? So if you're going to do meat, do chicken, do noodles, because noodles tend to be on the lower side of the pantry food aisle. Um, so you don't need meat, but if you are going to eat meat, pair it with something less expensive. And then eight is to change how you shop. So there are a few things that you can do here. The first thing is change your store. So maybe you're shopping at Aldi or Dollar Tree for pantry items. Don't knock Dollar Tree. A lot of that food in Dollar Tree, most, all of the food in Dollar Tree is I won't say all most of the food in discount stores is not expired, right? They're just overstock items that they're buying from other places. So check those stores out. Shop at farmer's markets. I know we hear this a lot, but you're going to save more money at a farmer's market than you might sit, save and spend at a grocery store because you can shop by the pound. Um, join your store rewards programs. Most grocery stores have rewards programs. And the good thing about the rewards programs are the coupons are attached to the account. So we don't have to dig through the paper anymore and carry around a stack of coupons just to save money. All you have to do is join that rewards program. Most grocery stores have them and then load those coupons into your account. And it's all done electronically and that can save you a lot of money. Think about the brands. Are you brand loyal, right? Are you buying Wonder Bread because it's Wonder Bread? Or is there something else you can buy? Are you buying Heinz because it's Heinz ketchup? Or is there something else you can buy? So pay attention to that brand loyalty. And then think about the day of the week that you shop. So typically people shop on Saturdays and Sundays, right? Because that's when they're off of work. But I know at my Kroger store, they have special discounts on Friday nights or Friday, right? So if you can Grocery shop on those off days, grocery shop when they're going to have um, deals and savings or change the days that you're grocery shopping. Of course, you want to buy in season. If you're looking for a watermelon in the middle of December and you live in New York City, it's going to cost you. So buy produce, buy fruits, buy, buy vegetables that are in season. Um, stop snacking. Snack, 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 snack. You don't need no snacks. Your back is screaming for help. Stop buying all the snacks. That's going to help your grocery budget. Do curbside pickup. The good thing with the pandemic is a lot of stores have continued their um, curbside pickup. So go in the app, order your food, order what you need, order what you want, and then pick it up with your own car, right? Or have it delivered, whatever you choose. But a lot of times that's going to be cheaper than going in the store and getting off list. Um, skip the packaging. So um, I don't know if you guys saw a few years ago, but they're selling like eggs boiled eggs in a pack that are peeled and it's like three dollars 12 dozen eggs don't cost that much right so skip the packaging on what you buy and then some people will tell you buy more uh, excuse me take more trips to the grocery store or take less trips i'm going to tell you do what works for you for me frequent grocery trips work better for you you might want to only grocery shop once a week and that's going to help you stay on budget so figure out which of those um ideas which of those tips work for you and either shop more and get everything you need at once or shop less and more often and get what you need for the next day or two figure out what works for you and then nine is watch your portion sizes everybody knows that in america we're fat and greedy right and so it's because our portion sizes are so large so start paring down and reducing those portion sizes you don't need seconds a lot of times you know you just need to drink water so think about that take out doordash uber eats i've said it once i've said it again it's killing your budget the reason being is because with doordash and uber eats and even some takeout places they add a dollar here a dollar there they're charging you um, a delivery fee. And when you really think about it, these are luxury services. This is not something that you should be doing if you need to cut your food budget because they're going to charge you more money for delivering your food to you. The same thing with Starbucks. Going to Starbucks every morning can be expensive. 
I think my Starbucks order is six dollars, right? And so if I'm going to Starbucks every morning, that's sixty dollars a week. How much is that over the course of a year? A lot of money. So you can buy Star Starbucks brand coffee that you brew yourself at home. You can buy cold brew that you um that's that's a higher concentration of coffee so it tastes better if you like your coffee cold and that's starbucks brand they have duck and donuts brand any place you can go and get coffee they have that so start buying it from the grocery store and making it yourself at home and then 11 is something that i'm going to personally do we're going to stick to switch to cash so we typically use our cards when we eat out or when we go to the grocery store we just swipe 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 everybody knows i'm not a huge fan of cash it doesn't work for me but our grocery bill is so high that we're going to try something new so we're switching to cash we're going to an envelope system once the money is gone is gone i don't know what i'm going to do i'll keep you guys posted but switch to cash and only use cash on hand and then on the other side if you typically use cash you find that you're going over you might want to switch to your card but figure out what works for you 12 is change how you take out. So if you are going to go to a restaurant, and you're going to sit down and eat or you are going to go to, you know, a fast food restaurant, change your order a little bit. Um, get water. So no drinks, no dessert, um, one plate per person. Only order an entree. These are small little changes that you can make to help reduce the amount of money that you're spending on food. Um, you have four people go down, go to sit down for dinner and everybody gets a drink. You're at $12 for drinks, right? Everybody gets a dessert. Desserts are usually eight, five, let's say they're $5 a piece. That's $20 for dessert. That's an extra 30 something dollars that you've added to your bill unnecessarily on just those two items before you got to the actual meal. And then 13, we've kind of already talked about, which is meal swap. So get with your mom, get with people in your family, get with people that you trust that can make um, make your food, whoever that is, maybe it's a sibling, maybe it's a family member, maybe it's a friend, and swap those meals out. And then lastly, last but not least, it's 14. You have to shift your mindset and you have to be intentional and aware of what's going on with your money, what's going on with your budget, what's going on with your food budget. Um, it's not going to be easy to stop eating out every day, but you can do it. You absolutely can do it. You just have to do it in your mind first. So once you make that mind sh mindset shift, make, once you make that adjustment, once you start saying, you know what, I'm not eating out for the month, uh, for the rest of the month, I'm not eating out for May, I'm going to cook at home, I'm going to make my own meals, or I'm only going to spend $20 for the rest of the month on fast food, whatever it is, um, you can do that. So I hope this helps. Some of these tips were um, things we've heard before, but it's good to hear them again. Um, Yes, food is high, but it doesn't have to be as high as it's previously been because there's things that you can do. OK, so I love you guys. Happy grocery shopping. I hope you have a great week. Hopefully you can get your grocery budget under, budget under control. I know I'm certainly going to be working on that because, yeah, it's not good. Have a good week. I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye bye.